There we go. Hi, so welcome everybody. Um, this is actually the fourth now in our series of Artists Open Houses Online. So welcome. I'm really pleased this evening um, to have Lauren Little of Dark Yellow Jot Dot um, join us and that she's chosen an artist, Kelly Frank. Um, kind of been aware of Lauren's work for a little while. So I'm really delighted to find a way to collaborate a little um, and really delighted to be introduced to Kelly's work that I haven't seen before. So thank you, Lauren. Um, we had a little glimpse of the studio earlier, so it's really exciting. Um, as you, some of you are aware, um, we've got an open call to submit your own short films to our open houses online. And there, I'll share the link shortly. Um, you can see some artists that have created kind of five minute a little bit of insight films into how they're working, how their spaces have changed during this period, um, what their creative blocks are, what hurdles they have, how they're trying to overcome them. And it's quite an honest, brave um, insight into their world. Um, so do take a look if you can. Um, there's um, kind of a, this evening we'll, we'll introduce Lauren and she'll um, interview Kelly for us and we'll have a little slideshow and then if as we go along please do in the chat enter any questions and we'll ask those at the end and then when we finish um, you're very welcome to join us just for a social gathering afterwards and just unmute yourself and have a little chat amongst yourselves if you'd like to and I'll just let another person in and um, we'll go over to Lauren Little who's going to introduce us to artist Kelly Frank thank you both very much for this evening and I will just spotlight you Lauren. Thank you and welcome. Hi guys. Um, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. I'm really excited to sit here and speak to you guys. I'm, as we said before, I'm Lauren Little. Um, I'm a collage artist and I teach experimental drawing at uh, Reading University and I'm an independent curator. And most of my curational, curatorial work has um, happened through my arts platform that I created called Dark Yellow Dot. Um, I'm happy to have worked with the likes of the b &A, Theatre Delhi, uh, True Colour Collective, Cassar, and, uh, and now Artillery. Um, yeah, I started Dark Yellow Dot as a way to share art from real artists that are at the beginning of their career um, and put them into real spaces that are unconventional, not necessarily a white walled gallery um, in order for the public to interact with art in a different, different way and make it more accessible to the everyday person. Um, so that's why I started Dark Dot um, back in 2017. And yeah, and I actually chose this artist, Kelly Frank, um, for today's talk and studio tour. Um, she is an Afri a South African born British painter uh, and Kelly has shown her work in a variety of exhibitions and displays since 2012. Um, she's had work in the Moore Galleries, War Gallery, The Mill, and um, she even appeared on Sky's Portrait Artist of the Year last year in 2019 um, and Dark Dot has had the pleasure of actually showing Kelly's work before um, one of her portraits uh, as an ex in an exhibition that we did in 2018 called Be A Man which was a collaboration with Theatre Delhi um, in central London which was a response to topics relating to men's uh, mental health. So yeah, I'm happy to announce that Kelly will be showing Kelly, Kelly will be showing her work again with us um, starting this Sunday at the Genesis Cinema Cinema Wall Gallery, uh, where I curate their exhibitions as well. Uh, that's in my lens, so that's coming on this Sunday, and it'll be up until um, August seventeenth. Um, yeah, and Kelly's work inspires me because. She has this very sensitive and emotional, emotionally revealing work that taps into this hidden story of 
um, her sitters. Um, she'll be able to explain it a lot better. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to introduce you guys to Kelly, Kelly Frank. Kelly, hi Kelly. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, how are um, you? Thank you, Lauren. Um, it's good to <laughs> be working with you again. You too. You, you look so comfortable in your studio right now. Yeah, um, so my studio is at the bottom of our garden, so um, it's a nice nook away, especially in the rain now, while it's all raining outside. It's nice to hear the raindrops on the rooftop. Have you been, how long have you had your studio space? Yeah, so um, uh, my family and I, uh, so I live at home, um, I live in Chinkford, so North Chinkford, so this is where my studio is. Um, we uh, built the studio ourselves, like it was a huge like sort of family get together and we built the whole thing from scratch. Uh, I, I have a history um, in architecture, so I was quite interested in building things. Um, yeah, so we've had it for about four years now. Um, so it took quite a while to, to actually get up, but um, yeah, here it is. That's so amazing. I think a lot of people will be really jealous about that. And considering it's so close to home, it's in your garden, like no traveling for you. So I think it's been, it's been great, um, especially in lockdown. Um, yeah. because I'm living at home and then sometimes it can be quite a lot of people in the house. And so it's been a nice space that I can get away um, uh, a little bit from my family because it gets a bit tense in lockdown now that we're all together. Um, in the house for like three months but it, it's been a, a like sort of a a hideout space a, a chill out um space that we have where we can just sometimes watch movies in here so um it's been a very different space in lockdown i think <laughs> of course i'm so excited because we are we're gonna get to um take a little tour of your of your studio space in a little bit um but first i wanted to ask you if you had a few words about um, your current practice and sort of what your intentions are in your, in your work and what you try to, to say in your paintings, in your drawings and use a lot of different mediums. So um, if you wanted to just expand on how you create your work and what your process is like. Mm, okay, I think, uh, I th well, Primarily, I, I paint portraits. So for um, the early part of my career, um, which is some of the exhibitions I've worked with you with as well, um, I've been looking particularly at people. Um, and I've always been really interested in watching people, um, watching their gestures and the um, sort of like the small habits that people have um, in their body movements. Um, I always think about um, drawing my friends and my family because they, there are people that have been close to me um, and that are easy accessible. Um, and when you know someone for a long time, um, you kind of pick up their little gestures, something that makes that is personal to them. Um, and you can sometimes see what someone feels without actually them saying it because you know them for so long. Um, and I think that's some of the sort of key ideas that I started off when I started making paintings and particularly portraits. So I was really interested in how um, people move and they have sometimes nervous uh, twitches or those kind of like gestures that they, they use that are specific to each person. Um, and so uh, my portraits in the beginning were very, very sort of trying to look beyond the skin um, and, and show how a person is feeling. Um, and sometimes there can be uh, differences there can be sort of like a wall between how you appear on the outside and how you feel on the inside um, and I think that's some one of the key ideas that I've been interested in looking at people watching them and so the process tends to be a mixture of particularly with portraits mixture of looking at working from life so actually getting to sit in front of someone uh, and watch them for a while is really important in picking up how they feel and how they have these kind of gestures. Um, but then I also use a combination. So I take photographs and then I have the person sit as well. So um, I try to use the sitting as that, that moment of getting to watch and look at the person's mannerisms, 
um, and trying to figure out what they do that is sort of like a pattern in their behavior. Um, and then once I've sort of figured that out, um, I tend to try and take a photograph of that moment and then use that um, for my portrait. So yeah, the process is a bit of photography and, and sitting from life. Um, and then, yeah, in the, in the beginning, uh, I was sort of like really just focusing on using oils, um, but slowly other materials started building into that, um, including some charcoal as well. So I primarily work in oils, but I have been experimenting recently. And do you want to give up, actually, Laura, do you want to put up the, the slide and we can sort of talk through um, some of Kelly's paintings so we can get a visual of what she's been saying. Yeah, it's ready now. And, um, and if Kelly, you want to just talk us through some of the pieces that are in this slide. Yeah. That's just the outside of the studio. So you can see our cladding work there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, one of the initial uh, sort of drawings you can see here is that I was looking at this idea that you can sometimes reveal certain parts of your, your character and you also hide certain parts. So you see in the beginning there, there's images um, of, of people um, sort of like with one eye missing or different parts of their bodies missing. And that comes from this sort of idea that uh, we, we can control how much we show people. So sometimes we, we choose to hide certain things and other times um, we, we show all of ourselves. And I was quite interested in that. So that's how the portrait started. Um, and, it, and we're moving on a little bit uh, as to how the work has changed um, in, the in the last couple of months in lockdown. I've been making these sort of quite um, confused uh, and multi-layered uh, drawings on charcoal. Um, and I think that's been a, like a result of, of coming, uh, like looking at a lot of um, images on, from social media, um, looking at newspapers, um, just the sort of sea of information that's coming at us at, at the moment with coronavirus. Um, and I think that's really, really changed my, my view on um, how, how I look at portraits and look at, at, at drawing the figure. So I think to begin with, like just before lockdown, it's kind of funny. Um, I was kind of looking to make work that had more of a background. I kept making these portraits that were sort of like floating in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I was really looking to have some sort of like, uh, some sort of meaning to them. Um, and then as the lockdown happened, um, I suddenly just had so much material to work with. There was so much on the news, um, so much on my phone that I'm watching. Um, and and, a, and a, as a way to sort of make sense of what I was seeing, I started to make these drawings. Um, uh, initially just taking sources of information from uh, newspapers or articles that I've watched on uh, online. And I started to make these uh, like charcoal drawings um, and the process has been really interesting um, because I've sort of changed the way I work. So uh, the actual process starts a little bit like um, making one drawing uh, with charcoal and then rotating the canvas 90 degrees and then drawing it again on top of it. So that's where you get those many layers. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's. The work, as you can see, the progress has, has changed quite a lot in lockdown. And how did you, how did you begin your journey as an artist in the first place? Um, yeah, that's that's quite a good question. Um, so I I studied architecture. Um, I did it for the first three years, and then I worked in industry for a year. And I think that was the point where I just really, really didn't like it. I didn't enjoy um, working. Uh, in the field currently in London um, and I think the thing that kick-started it for me was that I found it quite difficult to separate myself because that career path is very set you know you, you do your part one you do your part two you do, you do your year out and then you do your final exam um, and so 
I found a school, um, which is an atelier. In, I went to an atelier for a very short period of time. Um, in It's called the Barcelona Academy of Art. Um, and I think that just really separated myself from the world of architecture um, and helped me realize that I could make a living from art as an artist. I think I was afraid um, because architecture was quite steady, um, that it gave me uh, an opportunity to see other people making art and making a living from it. Um, and yeah, I think after that, that kind of, I did three months. It was a very rigid way of working. I don't know if you know anything about the atelier way of, of teaching, but it it helped me first be an environment of other artists working and being quite disciplined in, in taking drawing seriously. Um, and after I came back from that, I just started applying. So that was 2017. Uh, I started applying to exhibitions, competitions, uh, and just started to make work. Um, I think it gave me the confidence to to just try. Um, and from then on, I yeah other opportunities came forth and I started to build a body of work. I just love um, hearing you talk about your work. Like It just makes me so excited. <laughs> and this is exactly what, um, what Dark of the Dot is about, like bringing artists like you up to find different opportunities and allow them to realise that they can make a living from their work and just like find those spaces that they can sort of fit into and 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 begin to navigate their career in the beginning. I just think it's so great. Are you are you um, a full time artist now? Like, do you make most of your income from art? Um, yeah, I could I could say that. I, I say I make my so my work. I, I do commissions. Um, so that's part time. Um, I also teach an art class uh, part time, um, and that's a family business with my mum. Um, and that's yeah so the main sort of like the main way of me making money is still related to art and I still get to share my skill um, and then uh, it's, it's sometimes juggling like sometimes you're juggling a lot of things like so teaching part-time uh, uh, making art part-time and then I sometimes also work in an art gallery which helps um, like up my income as well so um, yeah. sometimes one is more and one is less and you have to keep like balancing them yeah yeah that's where we are well, that's where we're at right now is this like gig economy where you just find jobs that are maybe in the same niche that you want to be in and just um sort of chop and change between this between them um yeah. and i wanted to if i look down this is just because i've got notes here but um how how did you begin like are you self taught did you learn did you go to uni for it like how did you i know that you went to barcelona and you decided like you can actually shift your your um creative practice like were you always create like making art when you were younger are you self taught in that way and then you just um you just grew your strengths in in uni or how did it how did it, how did you evolve um yeah i think for me uh at, at a very young age uh i think drawing is part of my family everyone in my home um has some sort of artistic skill so it wasn't it wasn't unnatural for me to become an artist or to be drawing constantly um but yes yeah, so i think from a quite early age from like about 14 i started painting um, and painting was part of the things that I chose for GCSE and A-level. Um, and I think at A-level, I, I was working in, in quite a free way. Um, and, but I, at the same time, I, I got to an age where I was like, really wanted to be sensible. Um, I thought that art wasn't going to take me anywhere and that I wasn't going to be able to earn money and that I couldn't make it work. Uh, and so I, I sort of, set my eyes on architecture because I thought that was a way to balance the world of like having a career and also being able to make art and be artistic. Um, and so I went to uni, so I didn't have any formal art training. I went to uni to study architecture. And in that time, I didn't really get to paint much at all because it's quite a full on course. Um, so the 
formal training I have had in art, it was three months in Barcelona. Um, yeah. So I would say that I'm a self-taught artist and the rest have been me practicing and, and learning things on my own. Um, see, seeking out, I've always, always found that education uh, here at the moment doesn't quite suit my skills, um, particularly London schools, uh, young London universities which is why I've been picking and choosing my education in a way. I've been like choosing like places like the Art Academy to do a short course, going to Barcelona to do that because I found the specific things that I wanted to learn um, instead of being set to like three years somewhere, um, which I actually I don't, I don't think is a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Hasn't been too bad. How long does it take you to create um either a piece like a painting or a drawing or like a collection do you have a process where you're um you know thinking about ideas and then and then that generation takes longer or how what's the kind of duration of time between um idea generation and and finish um, for you on a typical general basis i think that's a yeah i think that's a really good question um well, I think that the process of, of creating an oil painting, um, whether it's a portrait, for instance, it usually takes between three to four days to actually make the painting. Um, and, and that's usually a process where I'm just working quite intuitively, especially if it's, if it's from life. So that, that like week long period is usually how a portrait would come about. But um, when it comes to work that I've taken more time to think about, about the story behind it, or trying to give some narrative, um, it tends to take a bit longer, up to about two to three weeks, usually. Um, uh, this series of work that um, I've been doing in lockdown um, has taken a lot longer, uh, and that not even for just reasons of thinking about it, but just because of the way the process has been now, of, like, I can't get materials or it might take two weeks to get this or uh, I haven't got access to certain things and so things have slowed down a lot more and I'm thinking much more about what I want on my page um, than before when I had easy access to, to, to models and to, to other types of materials so yeah so now it's taking a lot longer now it's coming into like months like a month or, or a month and a half to get a uh, a series together so yeah things have slowed down and so speaking of your new practice right behind you there's an amazing drawing that you've got up can you can you talk about it can we see more about it yeah sure um i've got a little bit of another one so this this series um behind me uh is a part of the drawings that i've been making in lockdown um, I've got another one here um, that I can kind of show you a little bit about the process. So um, I've been really sort of struck by the amount of information um, and new information that has come out about the virus and, and how it affects people um, in this time. Uh, it seems like every day there's a new form of information that counteracts the information yesterday and um, I think I was feeling really confused um, by this sort of overload of information and it kind of helped keep, I keep questioning like what is true anymore um, and uh, I started actually by making these drawings that uh, would initially um, I would start with well, one side here so this drawing I'm not sure if you can lightly see there's a there's a drawing of a woman wearing sunglasses in this direction oh, so yeah. I'd start with one image and then rotate the canvas 360 uh, degrees and then again so this is an image um, of people wearing masks in in a, a shop outside in, in Pakistan um, and I've been just taking inf inf information from everywhere so uh, news from all around the world because I felt like 
the virus affects everyone. So I've, I've noticed it's one thing that's just been global. So to have information and images of everywhere around the world, um, all on one page is quite, um, like the idea behind these paintings. Again, this is actually a scene um, of, of a hospital and this man in a huge suit um, going to disinfect it. And I think these images have been quite shocking and um, did it just, yeah, just hit somewhere that inside me that I just I don't even know how to, to relate to them in some ways. Um, so what happens is sometimes I apply the charcoal um, and it's been a process of moving things around because charcoal moves really easily. Um, so I, I push things back, I, I bring them forward. Um, I've been practicing a lot with the composition because what I've been trying to do is like make the drawing possible to see in every angle. So um, I've had to cut the paper down many times. I've had to uh, make things bigger and larger. Um, and it's been a test of my uh, composition skills a lot. So there's a few images here of someone um, setting a, a, a shop on fire in the Middle East. Um, so all very like shocking images. Um, and, and when you look at them all together, it just seems like a mess. And I, I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to say is that I, it seems like a mess to me when I'm looking at all of this information. Um, but what I guess what's been nice um, is that for the first time, um, I'm making work where I don't know what the end piece is gonna look like. Um, I start and it takes me on a journey and I don't know how it's gonna end because I rotate the canvas and it changes all over again. Um, so I think that's been very freeing uh to to not be so structured and to not have this idea ahead of me of what i want the work to look like um and i think that's allowed me to be a lot more creative and kelly you just it perfectly explained i feel like the the process of what the lockdown and the virus has been for so many people and the work that you just showed is so um visually accurate in in terms of how we perceive this how we're most of us perceiving the virus like you know you just said that it starts with um you know one thing and then it turns into something else and then you begin and not you don't really know where it's going to take you because there's no way to know once you've laid down one piece and then the next piece changes and the next the next layer changes and it changes and You've no idea where it's gonna where it's gonna end up, or when it really needs to end, where the beginning is, and um, that's like a perfect response, I think, to to the to the virus and the fact that you did all of that in lockdown and and was able to take all of these components and put them um, on a visual piece is is this is why I chose you. <laughs> Yeah, I think for the first time also, I think I'm responding emotionally uh, to what's happening around me and making work in response to it. Um, yeah. So before, I would take a lot of information from outside of me and put it on the canvas. So looking at other people and try and find their feelings. Uh, now I feel like I'm looking at my feelings that, that's going out. Um, and I think that's been quite honest and uh, authentic absolutely and I, we were, we kind of had a little chat before and i was just saying how um the i was listening to something earlier this week and she was talking about fear and how fear has um four basic uh principles to it and there's the fear of the fear of um people other people and there's the fear of four other people and there's the fear of nature, the fear of the unknown, and the, the grandfather of the fear of the unknown is the fear of death. And the virus has had all of those things in one. Um, and I don't know about you, but how, like I wasn't really sure what to think in the beginning of this, uh, this time period. I knew when I was still working and I was still like in the office or in, in uni, like I was, I was, not really sure what to listen to and like you said um 
you know, one piece of information would change from one day to the next. And I wasn't really sure who to believe. I wasn't really sure what to do about it or what, what opinions I needed to, to take on it. Um, so I was kind of like at a, at a standstill in the beginning. And then it, and then it became, oh no, we actually are not allowed to do anything except be indoors. Um, and I wasn't really sure how that, that shift was such a complete like 180 for everyone, I think. Um, I don't know, what were your first thoughts when you were at the beginning of lockdown? Like, how did it feel for you? Um, I think, it, yeah, it, it's definitely brought a lot of confusion. I think, for me, um, watching the news and, and this idea that suddenly all of our sense of what is true and right has, is coming from just our phones and these digital devices, um, because you're not you're not around people you, you cannot physically go to someone and be like how do you feel what do you think um and that lack of reality um means that our sense of reality comes from exact only what the news or what the the new articles are saying um and that's what was was quite scary for me because you, you know you hear about things in in china with so much censorship over what is true and what is not true um I found that quite scary um, and so I felt like um, being able to just look back and, and, and make an account of how these like information first the mask is okay then it's not okay and then it's okay and then it's not okay yeah. and this idea that, that, that truth is changeable is scary I found that really scary I think I think that's quite uh, like like there's nothing that's really true if you follow sort of like the way the world is is rationalizing at the moment um i find that yeah i found that quite scary and so i felt like art is a way of being able to to to, to say your feelings just as honestly as you can and i felt really confused by how the information got changed so quickly um and how it came out at this date and then it comes out at a different at another time so yeah i felt really confused and um but as an artist i think the lifestyle hasn't changed so much i feel like we we tend to be quite hermetic anyway um being in the studio um but i think we also thrive like i think creativity thrives in these kind of moments where you have challenges and there are crises and um there's something to respond to has your energy in art making um, taken a slump or has it peaked? Like, how was that journey? Um, uh, yeah, I think in the beginning, uh, there's still that uh, lots of unknown things in the beginning, like first month and a half, I think. I found it quite difficult to think about why I should make art because so many people are suffering and um, there's so much like slumps in the economy um, and just why am I making work if I can't do anything with it um, so that in the first couple of months and a half I think it was it was difficult to think about the future um, and then in between I think kind of broke past that barrier um, and started to make some work that was just relating to what uh, what I saw and just how I feel and then I started to to remember that art, art is really therapeutic as well. Um, so I, I did some serious drawings, but then I also just went out and like drew some flowers in, in my gar in the garden. So um, there's been other moments where it's just been okay. I don't understand what's going on, but I'm just going to draw what I see and, and and take one more step and um, see where it goes. So. Um... I want to, I'm getting so curious about the pieces on your wall. I've seen your studio before, but I'm um, not closely to all the, 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 the details. So I wanted to know if you can give us a tour of your studio. Cause I think everyone's yeah. probably getting excited about seeing what's behind you and, and the rest of the space. Yeah, sure. So I'm just going to change my camera. Can you see that? 
Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of my studio. So um, I have a wall here, um, which I use to as sort of like my gallery. Um, and it's great because just before lockdown, I, um, I started to clear out my studio, I had a massive spring clean. Um, this is a portrait I've done of Nitin Ganatra. Um, he's from EastEnders. He came to my studio um, that's fantastic. a few years ago. Um, so that's that portrait. Um, is that oil? Yeah, that's uh, oil on canvas. That's oil on canvas. Um, and it, it's, it's quite interesting because I guess you, you can see lots of different styles going on here. So that was quite early on, uh, about 2017. Um, this work um, is a lot more current. Uh, and then there's, yeah, a huge... Looking at it now, I can just see how, how different my work has, has evolved. Um, I've do, I do quite a lot of life drawing. Um, that's something that I really have missed um, in in lockdown, not being able to go and, and do life drawing. I have tried one class online, but it just really is, is not the same. Um, yeah, I think it's actually really nice to have a space on your wall where you can, uh, I might even turn it around as well so you can see it like that. Um, a space on your wall so that you can like see what the work looks like up because so often you you keep your work in folders somewhere and then it, you don't really see how it's put up and I think that's good practice for for exhibitions um yeah so that's my sort of gallery wall um this is my library um I saw my art books there and this is the main wall that I make work on uh as you can see it's pretty uh messy uh because i use the wall to to clean my brushes as i go along and i think that's why you have a studio space so it's, it's not supposed to be clean um yeah so this is the wall um that's the i kind of use i have a sort of custom easel that i just which is a basically a bit of wood that i put on to, um screw to the wall so that i can work large and other sizes so Here's a few of the other drawings that I've been making. Um, these charcoal drawings. I store my larger, um, larger canvases around here. Um, and I have a table by the window. Um, you can see all through my windows, you can just see the garden. It's just full of greenery. It's really nice because I feel really secluded. And I have this table, which I usually use to make smaller works. I'm framing a few things at the moment. Um, and I also use this table to make the are gonna be, uh, Some of these pieces are gonna be in the exhibition on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's my studio. Um, is there anything? what items what are your favorite items or pieces um i know my favorite one of my favorite pieces uh, i've got a few of yours but mm -hmm. is that one right there that you did on the portrait artist of the year yeah um this is michaela cole um i did that in 2018 for the sky portrait artist of the year I can maybe even zoom in for you a little bit so you can see some I of the colours. It's so fabulous. Can yeah. you how was that process? Can you just like touch on that a little bit? Like how was the process? If there's any artists listening who are curious about that or they're wanting to get involved for the next year, like how how was that? Yeah, it was a it was a really interesting process. Um I I applied actually I applied for that the first month that I decided to become an artist. So that was one of the first competitions I actually I actually entered. Um, and yeah, the I was very, very new to everything, so I was quite nervous. But what you essentially do is you apply online, it's free, um, and you are given a day if you get through to the next stage um, where you have to create a painting in four hours. So you get filmed, um, you don't know who you're going to, who's going to sit for you. Um, so I, I was really happy because 
Michaela has such good um, bone structure and yeah. I was, I've got quite a sort of geometric way of painting. Um, I was using quite a lot of flat square brushes. And so when I saw her, I was like, I was just so happy because I just knew that I could possibly uh, not screw that one up. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was quite, it was quite an intense day, uh, even though it's four hours of painting it's it's actually 12 hours of filming and interviews and everything else so yeah I was I was quite happy with my painting um I I was quite stressed um but it was it was really great to to get experience of the whole other side of of making art it's not just about the painting it's about talking about the work it's about responding to people um it's also about you know being able to to market yourself in the right way as well so i think that's what it taught me mostly and did you so you just applied and then they contacted you and told you you were going to be on the show basically and yeah that and then to get <laughs> to get a sitter that's amazing great what other um what other pieces are your either your favorite or favorite item that you mm. can share um okay so one is a gift i'm gonna just get up on this so you can see over there so that is a gift for my birthday from my brother um he i might actually take it down so you can have another look properly so yeah it's a picture of a bear um you can see the detail is quite intense it's got a really really fine pen and he does really lots of fine pen and ink drawings it's got a little bit of a wash to it um it's a bit of an inside joke um because he calls me a brown bear so that's one of my favorite pieces of work <laughs> um yeah uh, i like that one um i also yeah i think for me now uh it's also been i think i'm starting to focus on on a collecting work by other artists as well um so one is my brother's um another is one of my friends uh recently started making some uh it actually looks really nice against that wall doesn't it um some liner prints so this is uh one of my friends who's just recently started making some liner prints so those are two of my favorites um on my wall so far but hopefully it will grow soon i love it i love them both actually I didn't realise that your brother was also um, such a great art maker as well. Yeah, yeah, he's he very different. Studio as very, well. Very different types of skill. Um, so I'm quite expressive, but he's very, very technical. So yeah, you get quite a lot of detail in that one. Does he get to use your studio sometimes? Or um, any? yeah so the studio we do we do share it it's, it's also a space that we can just hang out in as well um and because uh we run an art class that's um a family business we restore some of the materials here um and i actually have also been teaching some of my classes um with this as the backdrop um for some of the pieces of work some of the classes which has been nice um just gets all the messiness outside of the house yeah. yeah thank you so much for the yeah. tour love it That's i think fine. everyone um everyone would just love a studio like that it's like <laughs> a stone's throw away from the house that's amazing um so i have a question do you have a skill that you have yet to learn that you would love to develop um i think for me uh the the main thing that i'd like to learn um is to to learn some carpentry um i've been trying to make my own frames um not very well so far um so carpentry will be definitely the one thing that i'd really love to to be able to get a hang of that's actually such a great um a great skill <laughs> like i didn't think you would choose that but that's such a great one so what is next for what's next for you um yeah or what would I, you like I, to be next 
I think I, I'd really like to explore um, these, these drawings that I've been starting in lockdown. Um, and not just with the idea of, of COVID, I feel like this idea of true and false it is running through a lot of uh, sort of ideas in politics and, and in our society at the moment. So I'd, I'd like to take other topics that have these sort of, you know, this discrepancies between you know one country saying this thing the other country saying the other um, and I don't I don't see my work being as something that is taking a side but just saying showing things as they are sharing that conflict um, so I'd like to be able to take that idea and, and make it um, apply it to different things uh, and maybe even I like, work a lot bigger as well I'd, I'd love to be making really really big paintings that's so amazing, Kelly. I'm so, so um, excited to see what comes in the future from you. And what has been so far that you've, you've in, your, in your career, what's been like the biggest impact uh, so far on you or on your career? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I, think, I think actually, uh, going on Sky Portrait Artist of the Year was quite a big thing. Um, it it also made me take my work a bit more seriously. Um, I think before that I was just yeah just trying something out and I didn't really know how to how to market myself properly. Um, so that m pushed me into areas of like suddenly I didn't have a website, I didn't have an Instagram, I didn't have these serious things, and they were like, you need to have this, get it sorted. Um, so that, yeah, it kind of propelled me into a way where I had to take things seriously. Um, so I think that experience has been really beneficial and it was just, yeah, such a blessing to, to have got. I'm really proud of you for having done that as well. And so this is going to be my last uh, question to you. What kind of advice would you give to artists that are also just starting out? that are at the beginning stages of their career and they want to make this transition from a hobby or student to taking it more seriously. What's kind of one thing that you would tell them um, has helped you and that you would give advice on? Yeah, um, I, I actually think that, um, I've been reading a book recently, it's called The Artist's Way. Um, so I think sometimes in uh, artists trying to think that creativity is this kind of thing that falls from the sky sometimes um, and I think what I learned along the way is that if you treat it as if it is another job like as if you were working in an office uh, that things do come from it you know you reap what you sow so if you put just work at it um, as if it was any other job um, it things do do show up and, and, and you get some traction on that so sometimes we have this idea that it's like you've got to have this amazing idea and you've got to have this amazing style and um, and actually there's just things that get built from just putting in the little things, doing the small things um, steadily, uh, not just erratic kind of like flows of uh, um, sort of creative energy that sometimes we think uh, that only art happens that way it does happen like that sometimes but in between you do have to do the steady uh, small things um which is something i've learned yeah yeah maintenance that's so true thank you so much kelly i'm so excited to have done this with you um so just as i said before we're gonna have kelly's work at the genesis uh cinema wall gallery it's in mile end uh, near to Bethnal Green Station and that will be up this Sunday until August 17th um, yeah and so I'm really excited to see and, and that exhibition is actually going to show some of the the drawings that Kelly's presenting today the new um, the newest start in her sort of lockdown um, the response to lockdown so um, definitely if you have time or if you're not too you know so not too frightened to venture out definitely go to the genesis and check that out and um you can find information on this and kelly's work and any other work that i'm doing at darkula dot at uh, darkula dot dot com 
or you can find me and uh, the rest of the projects that I'm doing uh, at darkkiller dot on Instagram and everything else at darkkiller dot Facebook Twitter uh, is all there. So yeah, I hope to um, see some of you guys there and follow me and I'll follow you back. Uh, same with Kelly. Definitely follow Kelly. She is doing some really great things and her future is really, really bright. So um, definitely keep an eye on her. Um, and I just want to say a quick thank you to Artillery Arts for inviting me to do this and um, allowing me to bring Kelly on to share with you. So yeah i'm really excited to have done this and if you guys have any questions for kelly or for me definitely um we can talk about them in the in the q a after this so as uh that's it so i'll turn it over to to laura again and yeah thank you very much both of you um always learn so many new things but because I've not heard about your work before. It's an extra treat for me, so thank you. Um, I'm gonna go to Penny um, before we go, just to see there's some lovely questions in the chat, Penny. Do you want to tell us? Yeah, that was fantastic, really interesting. Um, okay, so one of the first questions we had is, can you tell us a bit more about the Atelier way of working, Kelly? Yeah, um, so uh, the Atelier way of working uh, hasn't changed for hundreds of years. So the way uh, Da Vinci worked is still the way that they teach it. Um, there are some schools in London now that teach the Atelier way. Um, and basically it is drawing um, using uh, a, a thumb, so, so a, a method of drawing called sight size. So it's where you draw people the same size as the way you see them from a, a certain perspective um, and it also is drawing from a series of uh, plates called bark copies um, and so you make copies of these plaster cast drawings um, that are rendered very in sort of high, hyper realistic way uh, and you also draw from life a lot so it's a very rigid kind of uh, structure and, uh, and unless you get one thing right, you don't move on to the next. So it takes about three years to be able to, what it essentially does is it says, I'm gonna take any person who has no skill and I'm gonna be able to teach them how to paint realistically in three years. And if you go through this, the stages, you will be able to do that. Um, it's a very vigorous, um, it's a lot of hours. And um, unless you've, you've ticked off one stage you cannot move to the next so you have to draw things many many times in, in uh, precise detail so it's, qu wow. it's quite interesting <laughs> yeah. pretty intense i should think uh, uh, it's um, but in barcelona uh, the barcelona kind of balances it out <laughs> <laughs> um a good question here but i was thinking this you you obviously come from a really creative background you mentioned that it's a family business you've shown us some work by your brother and your mum does the art classes with you. Um, Natalie has asked, what's your earliest art memory? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think I, I had this one drawing that's in our kitchen um, and I, I don't really remember drawing it, but it's just a very simple uh, oil pastel drawing in, in uh, with just the two two flowers and I, I was six then um and yeah so drawing has been part like very from about six years old i think that was uh when it just all began and i think it's the same process for my siblings as well we started quite early um and it's always been something i can go and show my brother something or my sister come and show me something and i can we can talk about it um and i think actually later on when you think about it uh, community is so important as artists and I think it, it's been yeah it's been such a blessing to be able to have people I can ask about do does this look okay um does is it the right color well I thought it, I actually thought it was very interesting that you showed your the the bear that your brother had done and how he's very technical and you say your work is more expressive 
when actually with your architectural background, I might have imagined it be the other way around. Yeah, um, yeah, that's interesting. I think it's actually because my brother is more of a scientist. So he, he, he loves analytical drawings where you dissect things. And so that's his background. Um, even more technical, probably more technical, more scientific than I would be. Um, and I think me, I, I did start off being technical learning in architecture, but I really disliked it. I really disliked it the whole time. And I wanted to break free from that. And so I think that's why I really did make that change to become a painter. Um, but presumably some of those technical drawing skills have been useful. Yes, yeah, yeah, a lot of them. So whenever I, whenever thinking about actually drawing a figure in the space, I have much better understanding of spatial design uh, and looking at spaces and looking at perspective in, in that way and scale as well. You need to use that a lot when you're drawing. So it has, yeah, there's been so many amazing skills that I've learned. And actually, I think some of my carpentry making frames, I, I wouldn't have got that if I wasn't going to go to architecture school. So. Sure. Um, now I have a question here from Glenda. I think she's referring to the more recent works, the different layers and the ones with it that you um, orientate in different ways. Whether you feel that same approach could be linked to other mediums, because you said you work in charcoal for that because it is so fluid, but do you think yeah. it works? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I think for me, there's sort of like the groundwork for a painting. Um, I know that, yeah, that charcoal is, is just the closest to, to paint in, some, in many ways. So for me, I think I envisioned them to be paintings, but I just needed to try it out first in a, a quicker way. I know oil paint takes a lot longer and that's something that I'm more used to working. So for me, I would say that working in oils is what I envisioned envision them to, to turn into but actually this new way of working has actually just made me stop being so sort of pointed or directional about how the work is going to go um, so actually that's a good good point I think that actually I should open the doors even more and and, and, and let it go wherever it, it, it should take me um, instead of trying to see the end from the beginning. Because that actually takes us to another question about what you plan to do, what, how you plan to extend those drawings and create something else from them? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think actually, um, for now, I, I will try and take, and take them into a painting. Um, but I've really enjoyed this, this process of not knowing what it's going to turn out. So I feel like um, I, I, don't, it, I have experience of making three things three-dimensional as well. So I don't know if they become like a sculpture or um, something more, much more than that. So I, I'm, I'm going to work with whatever materials I have. Another thing about being in lockdown is that I've been very res trying to be resourceful for w with what I have, um, not trying to get too many things that I don't don't have or need to go out to buy. Um, so I'm going to the next step is probably going to be just using what I have to forward it as much as I possibly can. Um, and if that means that it has to go beyond the surface of a the canvas, then I'll, I'll consider that as well. Okay. Um, so we've got a question here about your typewriter, because we all spotted your lovely vintage typewriter. Is that an art tool for you? Um, I, I have used it in some recently. I, I did a commission for this couple um, and I used it to write a thank you note. Uh, Oh, in, inside the commission so that's what I did with it um, I haven't ever used it in, in, in my work before um, I've only just got it out because I was doing a clear out so uh, that could be an option as well yeah. okay I've actually got a question here for Lauren actually um, Lauren can you tell us a bit about how you build relationships with your artists and and with the exhibition spaces and, and where you curate your shows? Um, well, I began because I felt like I didn't really have um, an art community. I actually lived abroad in Canada for like half of my life. And when I got back, um, I didn't really have that same 
you know, community that I had back there in, you know, in my uni or my friend group. So when I came back to London, I didn't really have that, um, that group, that space that people that I could sort of call on and, and interact with and have those conversations. Like Kelly was talking about, um, her siblings having their contributions and, um, I didn't really have that access. So I created, um, an Instagram page to kind of see what was out there, what artists were around and what they were doing. And I just noticed that there were so many great artists that also felt the same way and they didn't really have this sort of um, place to go to or community if they didn't already have one from uni or from, from friends or whatever. So um, it kind of grew from, from there. So my connection with the artists grew from, from just interacting with them on social media and then, um, I grew a larger community and I just wanted to have like an art competition uh, to celebrate them. And then that was the first, I, I, that was the first sort of thing that uh, established uh, me as a curator because I'd never really dug into that before. So from when I knew that I wanted to make an art uh, competition with the artists that I'd been interacting with and seeing, um, I reached out to a gallery space that I had shown my work in, which was the Genesis. And um, the at the time, the curator and, and I uh, kind of hit it off. And I told them, told her about the, the project that I had, which was Dark Hero Dot and the community I was building. And uh, the first art competition came from that. And so just in doing that one thing, it kind of inspired me to do more of that. And I just, I saw the the excitement and the happiness that came from the artists that showed in that competition and like going through the selections and um you know them being selected and then winning the competition and i just really it was like more meaningful uh to just to do that than it was um in my previous work and i just knew that i wanted to keep doing that so in in doing that i just started to look for different spaces that also uh, cared about having art artists in their spaces so i've worked with i'm now the gallery manager of the genesis because that person had moved on um and uh, referred the position to me but i've worked with fifth delhi which is in uh, right near liverpool street um i've worked with different little independent different little independent um projects like true color collective where she is another artist platform but they're performing arts um and they linked with me to, to curate their show at the ica um and then i worked with the vna on a friday friday late that they did which was um in november 2018 i went to the vna to to do um kind of a workshop which was about um, arts and activism and I have worked with Kassar I'm affiliate with them and yeah so there's just like a lot of different um, different little spaces creative debuts and they art there um, yeah so I'm just trying to find and I'm, it's an ongoing thing it's not just a, a catalogue and that's it but it's an ongoing thing and I, I like to source different um, venues that are that are still open to supporting young artists and independent and diverse artists. And um, I just really appreciate those spaces. And a lot of the time um, people approach me too, so that I can find out about them through that way. Um, yeah. So if, yeah, if anyone can go to darkillow.com. And you are, and are you artists, are they from all over the UK or do they come from overseas as well? The artists that I exhibit in real spaces in, are in, in London are generally from London or they're from the UK, but that sometimes depends on the sort of, um, not the rules, but what the, the space wants to do with the show, if they can afford to ship in art um, or if, you know, we just want to keep it local. Genesis Cinema likes to have... Um, artists that are like local to the area or to London so um or to East London so that's for them and Theatre Delhi doesn't mind it coming from the US or anywhere so one of our shows we had a nice it from the like two artists from the US one from China 
um, and then the, the rest were from the UK, some were from all parts of the UK. Um, so it kind of depends what, and then online, um, the artists that I show in on social media, those are from all over the world. And I have a, a monthly art competition, which shows eight artists um, on the website and they, and that links to like their own, their own arts profile sort of thing on darkkiller.com. And that is an art competition that's open to all over the world. Um, so, yeah. Oh, excellent. Um, okay, well, I've got another question for Kelly, which is one of my own. I don't know if anybody else has got more questions they want to put in the chat. But Kelly, this is a bit of a, a fangirl type question. <laughs> um, you, you talk about um, the relationship you build with the people that sit for you and noticing all their gestures and movements. When you've got somebody like Michaela Cole or Geraldine James, who's a, a who are sort of famous, are you a bit starstruck? Um, yeah, I think the first the first uh, first time I was on, I was really really starstruck. I did, and there's also other celebrities walking around around you, and you're like, I don't know where where to look. Um, <laughs> Uh, but what ends up happening is because you're actually watching that person stay still for four hours, there's something in between that that you do get to see because they're not performing anymore and they have to be relaxed. Um, mm. and, and then you do sort of start to see that what their inner character is because it's always hard with actors because, you know, they, they can portray something different um, other than just their authentic self. So you have to try and fish around and try and figure out where's where's the bits that are you and I think when you when it's that process of of, of looking at someone for several hours that you start to notice the, in, the okay you keep doing that or that's a pattern of, in your behavior so yeah initially I was just like ah because I did also didn't know who was going to show up they don't tell you they just say clap your hands now and then this is the person you're going to draw so yeah, it's initially quite scary, but I think when once you watch once you're watching someone for that period of time, you get to sort of just see, and you get so into the painting as well, like you just start painting because the painting yeah. is going to be your focus. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit about the art classes that you do and how people can find out about them and, and the art classes that you're? I think it, you do it with your mother, did you say? Yeah, yeah. So um, the classes that I run are called, uh, is the Forest Art School, um, and that's in um, North Chinkford, which is quite close by to our home. Um, I, there's a, we can look at our website or just try, try typing in Forest Art School, um, and you'll be able to find um, a number or um, somewhere to book on there. Uh, yeah, so that, that's quite local, and we try to I try to teach a, a, a range, so we do a printing task, a, a painting task, a drawing task, we do a little bit of everything. Um, and I think that's been also really helped me in my own practice, is stay broad and, and not just for a home in on just painting, painting, painting. Yeah. We've got a request here for you. Somebody wants to see you paint, do a Killing Eve, Judy Cohen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that could be interesting. Yeah, you can contact me if you want a commission. <laughs> T taking a commission for a portrait that must feel like quite a responsibility as well yeah um uh, i've actually been very lucky to have some over this time as well um so normally I, I do get a lot more interaction with the person but over lockdown it's been quite solely just uh, working from photographs uh but i chat I've done it a few times now and I'm starting to learn the etiquette. There's a lot of etiquette that you need to learn in between. Um, just making sure that the person is always uh, seeing the process because they like to see that bit as well. I think part of being on the show makes you realize that people like watching people paint. Um, so getting for them to see some of that process in between um, and I always like to also just ask the person to take a picture of the painting on their wall so that I can get some feedback of how they relate to it in their home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's, there's been, it's been a process because I, I didn't realise that when I first started. Um, I didn't realise that you need to be contacting them quite a lot, showing them how it is, 
this is the stage that's at, what do you think about this colour? Just giving them freedom. Too much freedom is too is not good either. Um, but just giving them a choice of two options that you have chosen <laughs> um, seems to be the way that I'm, I'm sort of like working it through now. Okay. Um, oh, we've got another one here. Going back a bit to the celeb side of things. <laughs> is there anybody that you'd really like to paint? It doesn't need to be a celebrity, obviously, actually. Is there somebody that you would really love to paint? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, that is a really good question. I mean, I, I'm going to be really silly because when I was young, I really, I really admired Alexa Chung. I, I thought she was really cool and she was like one of my role models. Um, so I'd really love to paint her, um, especially because she's quite interesting. She's got quite a sarcastic sense of humour, so I'd love to paint her. Get to spend some time with her as well. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think we've come to the end of our questions. So that's been absolutely fantastic. You've given us a really good insight into your work and your practice. And, and it's always great to snoop around people's studios. But I think that's quite a, a very tidy studio. <laughs> <laughs> you must have known we were coming yeah <laughs> okay should I hand you back to Laura hello thank you all so much again um so yeah I was just gonna say I'm really really grateful to you both um you're absolutely right about people enjoying seeing the process Kelly um it's been extraordinary to see your work in progress tonight. It really is kind of like just in the early stages of development and that is quite an exceptional thing to witness. So thank you. Um, and also maybe, I don't know, but maybe, you know, exposing that at this early stage as well is really quite a precious thing as an audience. And, and it's really why we establish these events, these online open houses, because we miss them um, when we don't have our E17 Art Trail Festival. So, um, I thought that um, uh, you talked about um, your productivity and that I'm always really mindful of um, not making people feel um, anxious about their lack of productivity. Um, it always looks like other people are doing a huge wealth of things. Um, and so we'll definitely hear in the next um, open house from two people that may not consider themselves artists still. Um, they <laughs> have quite severe cases of, um, of imposter syndrome still, when I think they've lived almost twice as uh, the life I have. Um, <laughs> and they, um, and they feel they wouldn't necessarily, uh, one of them necessarily call themselves an artist. And I think they're prolific and fascinating and huge champions of the arts. So really looking forward to that one. I hope lots of you can join us. Um, thank you, Penny Rutterford, for programming all of these events so brilliantly. Thank you to Orlando Capitanio for all your technical support. To Lauren for introducing us to Kelly's fantastic work. A really lovely. Thank you so much. Um, if everyone wanted to unmute and um, or do kind of the, the Zoom applause, um, please do. And um, we can then have a little bit of a social gathering if you want to stay around. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you guys yes. so much. Hi, thank you. Yes, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Well done. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you.